By the late 1980s, South Africa had manufactured 153 Oliphant Mark I-A tanks, with two tank squadrons, E and F, actively deployed during the South African border war. These units participated in key operations such as Modula, Hooper and Packer, where the South African Defence Force intervened to support their allies, UNITA, against Cuban and Soviet-backed FAPLA forces. Anticipating the need for a more formidable upgrade to the Oliphant Mark I-A, and amidst the formulation of requirements for a new generation main battle tank, the South African arms industry embarked on the development of the Oliphant Mark I-B. Unveiled to the public in 1991, the Oliphant Mark I-B represented a comprehensive overhaul of its predecessor, tailored specifically for African landscapes and shaped by lessons learned from the South Africa border war. One of the most influential tanks to emerge during the Cold War era was the Soviet T-72. If you're curious about how this iconic tank evolved over decades of service, you'll want to check out T-72, the definitive guide to the Soviet workhorse by Ryan A. Then, also known as Interlinked, the creator of the Tankograd blog. In this meticulously researched book, you'll explore the evolution of the T-72 with detailed graphics and comparisons to Western tanks. Learn about the development of the tank's cannons, sights, engines and armour layout, from its earliest designs to the advanced Contact 5, and discover how each module advanced over time to shape the T-72's battlefield performance. Whether you're a military historian, a tank enthusiast or simply curious, T-72 the definitive guide to the Soviet workhorse offers unmatched insight into the tank that shaped modern warfare. Order your copy today by following the link in the pinned comment below. The conception and creation of the Oliphant Mark I-B were driven by the escalating presence of Soviet-supplied tanks in sub-Saharan Africa. Growing concerns about the potential delivery of T-72M main battle tanks to Soviet-backed Cuban forces in Angola led to an urgent need for an interim solution. Thus, South Africa's defence industry was tasked with producing a main battle tank superior to the Oliphant Mark I-A in terms of protection, mobility and firepower to effectively counter the potential threat posed by this new Soviet tank while a new generation of domestically manufactured tanks was being developed as a long-term solution. Unlike its predecessor, the Oliphant Mark I-A, which was an upgrade from the Centurion, the Oliphant Mark I-B underwent a complete redesign and, in doing so, discarded the Centurion's legacy, features and outer look. Development of this improved variant began soon after the Oliphant Mark I entered production in 1981 with the first completed Mark I-B prototype conducting trials at Debre, Loatle and Fastrap in 1986. These trials, undertaken by two Oliphant crews with a spare driver, spanned five months. Despite the preference for wheeled configurations in the South African terrain, the Oliphant Mark I-B retained the Mark I-A's fully tracked configuration. It also kept the same continental 29-litre turbocharged V12 diesel engine, but with several improvements that increased its power by 200 horsepower, reaching a total of 950 horsepower. This engine, combined with a new Amtra 3 automatic transmission, enabled the Mark I-B to achieve a top speed of 58 kilometres an hour on the road, 12 kilometres faster than the Mark I-A, and an acceleration from 0 to 30 km an hour in 11.5 seconds on flat terrain. The Mark I-B also saw significant suspension rework, replacing the old Centurion Horseman suspension with a modern torsion bar system, resulting in a 300-400% to 400 increase in wheel travel. Bump stops and telescopic dampers further improved off-road mobility and stability, while steering via a yoke provided a smoother driving experience, especially over rough terrain. The fuel capacity of the Mark I-B was increased from 1,240 litres in the Mark I-A to 1,382 litres, extending its operational range. 
The tank could now travel 360 kilometers on roads, 240 kilometers off-road, and 150 kilometers on sand. With the redesign of the hull, the engine compartment was extended, providing more space for easier maintenance and, if necessary, the removal and replacement of the entire power pack. The latter also resulted in the need for an additional track link, bringing the total to 109 track links on each side. An outer polyurethane surface was applied to reduce the frequency of road wheel replacements, increasing the road wheel life from 300 km on the Oliphant Mark 1A to 1,200 km on the Oliphant Mark 1B. The extended engine compartment lengthened the overall hull. The Oliphant Mark 1B is equipped with a Browning 7.62mm coaxial machine gun with a 2,000 round ready bin replacing the 200 round boxes used in the Oliphant Mark 1A. At least 6,000 rounds of 7.62mm ammunition are carried. The Oliphant Mark 1B also features tactical radio communication for reliable command and control, enhancing its force multiplier effect on the battlefield. Based on lessons learned during the South African border war, the Oliphant Mark 1B includes two drinking water tanks inside the turret, with a combined capacity of 101 litres. The water can be accessed from the commander's and loader's stations, reducing the need to leave the tank to fetch water. Adding a fume extractor fan helps clear the interior crew compartment of excess fumes from the main gun. Additionally, new and more comfortable seats have been installed to help reduce crew fatigue. The aforementioned improvements required that the crew conduct fewer logistical tasks as well as reducing the need for replenishment from administration and logistic support vehicles from the echelon. The Oliphant Mark 1B is operated by a crew of four, namely commander, gunner, loader and driver. The commander station, on the turret's right side, includes a redesigned cupola with six vision blocks offering a 360 degree field of vision. Entry and exit are through the commander's station hatch. The gunner station, on the turret's right in front of the commander station, has day and night sights, while the loader station on the left features a periscope. Primary entry and exit points for the gunner and the loader are through the commander's cupola. But in case of emergency, the loader can escape through a hatch of his own. The driver station received ergonomic improvements with a digital panel and yoke-type steering stick, along with improved situational awareness thanks to additional periscopes. The driver could enter or exit his station through a new hatch above the driving station, or an emergency escape hatch on the floor. The turret bustle was also extended to store crew equipment which improved weight distribution. To counter the potential threat posed by T-55, T-62 and especially the T-72M MBTs, the Mark 1B received a comprehensive armour upgrade while retaining the Mark 1A's original armour layout. These upgrades included passive composite armour packages over the frontal glasses plate and turret, with a gap left between the original and add-on armour, which effectively serves as spaced armour against heat rounds. The hull was reinforced to withstand 23mm anti-aircraft gunfire, while the side skirts which were meant to protect against RPGs were redesigned to be easier to remove. An improved fire suppression system was installed, as well as a double armoured floor, offering additional protection against landmines. Smoke grenade launchers were relocated to the rear of the turret to avoid damage while driving through thick brush. The Oliphant Mark 1B also gained the ability to lay down a smoke screen through the engine exhaust. Additional features included armoured headlamps and a V-shaped bush basher bar located on the front of the glasses. The total weight gained through the protection upgrade was just over three tonnes. The Mark 1B was equipped with a 105mm GT-3B rifled gun barrel from Littleton Engineering Works, 
with several upgrades which included a new thermal sleeve and fume extractor to enhance accuracy. The former would reduce barrel droop due to the heat generated when firing the main gun repeatedly by 70 to 90 percent. The main ammunition types included second generation APFSDST, M456 Heat and the Donnell M9210HE Round, which is domestically manufactured. Safety improvements in the fighting compartment included stowage bins for its 65 main gun rounds. A new electric turret drive improved the turret traverse rate to 23 degrees. Additionally, an infrared white searchlight could be mounted on a bracket above the main gun. In 1990, the South African Defence Force tasked Roytech Systems with developing a new fire control system to replace the 30-year-old system on the Oliphant Mark 1A. The resulting FCS, known as the HIF, featured a state-of-the-art ballistic computer system, sight drive and electronics. It was coupled with a touch-button control system and sensors that accurately measured meteorological conditions such as ambient temperature and wind speed, which can affect the firing accuracy of the main gun. The new system allowed the gunner to select a target and, in less than two seconds, the FCS would calculate a firing solution and notify the gunner with a ready-to-fire light indicating that the main gun was on target and ready to fire. The system could also engage a moving target while the tank was in motion by adjusting the main gun's aim, taking into account the target's distance, speed and relative speed, thereby maximising the first round hit probability. The gunner used an Eloptro X8 day sight with an integrated ballistic computer added to the gunner's sight. Co-mounted was a laser rangefinder accurate up to 10 kilometers. Data from the rangefinder was fed into the split range drum, which applied elevation to the main gun. Tests revealed that the system was accurate within 30 by 30 centimeters at 3 kilometers, which is ideal for the South African Lofeld. Some 44 Oliphant Mark 1B tanks were produced in two batches of 22 vehicles each in 1991. However, due to the shortcomings identified by the SADF, such as the lack of a hunter-killer ability and lack of developed service manuals, the Oliphant Mark 1B was never adopted nor put into active service. Some 26 were upgraded to Oliphant Mark II standard in 2006, while the remaining are in environmentally controlled warehouse storage at the Wallman Stall, north of Pretoria. The original prototype can be seen on display at the South African Armour Museum in Bloemfontein. The Oliphant Mark 1B stands as a testament to the evolution of South African armoured warfare technology. However, issues emerged including a poor power-to-weight ratio and the main gun system's failure to surpass Mark 1A's performance. Moreover, the desired enhancement in combat capability was not achieved. These drawbacks prompted the SANDF to wait until a new generation MBT was developed, with the tank technology demonstrator serving as the basis of such a design. The Oliphant Mark 1B remains a notable example of adaptive military innovation and South Africa's defence industry's engineering excellence. We want to especially thank our medium and heavy tank Patreon supporters Alex Harvey, Andrew Oberg, Gustavo Sanchez, Owen M and The Sasquatch. Your generous contributions help fund our research, illustrations and video production. Until next time, keep us in your sights.